So how uh, you want to tell the listeners how you did on your competition 11? That was an 11 bird, right? That you just flew? Yeah, the 11 bird. That was uh, this last weekend. Yeah. My birds flew fantastic. I didn't DQ this time. They, uh, they did all right. It was kind of scary at first. About the 10 minute mark, they looked like they were, looked like they were getting a little bit tired. Like they might want to come down. But uh, the wind picked up a little bit. They got a little bit of elevation. And then um, a hawk showed up. So uh, when the hawk showed up, you know, that maybe saved my butt. I, I count it as a, as a win. I'll put him on the payroll if he did save my butt, because that's kind of cool. But uh, he put him up so high that the judge wasn't able to score it. Um, and it's no fault of the judge. Big Bird was not on my side. You know, it was a lucky break. It was a lucky break before it was ever a bad break. I'll put it that way. You know, I'd rather have him show up and push him up in the air and keep my score. Yeah, man, like that's the odd thing. Like usually a hawk showing up or whatever, a bird of prey showing up, that's not a good thing. That that usually leads to a, an immediate DQ because it just there's a wrench they'll and go up so and, yeah yeah they'll go up so far they're not like a homing pigeon that'll come racing to the you know to cover they go right. way up in the air yeah we talked about that before i think like you said that's a tippler treat you know that's inside of them that high flyer evade the predator so, well i don't know if all of them do that i gotta clarify that i don't know if all of them do that the breed that i have is a high flying breed you know they'll they'll tend to fly a lot higher than some rollers you know some will keep a nice 40 60 80 feet some will go up 400 feet just depends some of that is management too you know some of that that has to do with how you manage your kit how how high they're gonna fly but a lot of it has to do with what bloodlines you're carrying too well, we're going to be doing an episode on nutrition. That's the name of the game today. We have uh, Green Valley Grains is going to be coming on here. They're a small boutique stock feed manufacturer located in Beaconsfield, Victoria. They spent the last 10 years building the foundations of a strong and prominent brand in the Australian stock feed industry. These guys do real custom blend stuff. Is it tomorrow or yesterday there? It's tomorrow there. Okay. Hi. Lovely to meet you. I got, I'm just playing with my little bird here. Don't mind me. Oh. I got it's a bring your here. bird to work oh. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so do you have a, uh, a flock of pigeons, Megan? No, I sadly do not. I sadly do not. I have more of a flock of, of uh, other animals like horses, goats, oh, no. chickens. Uh, have we have the menagerie at our place other than pigeons. <laughs> Man, you know, I think a lot of guys get so many pigeons, they think about opening up a feed store and you got the yeah. feed store going and you don't have the pigeons you got to fix that that's it that's it we 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 cater to all all animals we do bird uh hobby farm animals uh poultry we do huge in poultry everything in between we do even do rabbits and guinea pigs and all of those little pocket pets as well it's just starting to sound like my house <laughs> yeah i think once you start uh then it's kind of you keep adding on Oh, yeah. I need to get myself a feed store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we supply the feed stores with whatever they want. We clean and dress the grains, we blend the grains, we we ideate different products to whatever their customers want. So you guys operate a uh, your own mill and do all your own blends yourself? Yes, or? yeah, we're, we're a feed mill uh, in um, sort of the southeast of Victoria. Um, uh, down south in Melbourne and we cater to sort of more of the hobby market we're not we don't do bulk uh, tanker trucks into um, commercial properties but we do into small um, hobby farm customers 
yeah so we don't do into like poultry farms or dairy farms or anything like that we do into into the likes of your demographic your listeners demographic of of backyard animal lovers that that have a hobby and uh yeah we feed their animals so just to jump right into it because you guys do like a boutique style with all the different blends can you explain why rollers fancy pigeons racers high flyers why why do they need a different blend of seed and yeah well that's it's yeah it's really interesting getting into the i suppose the science behind uh grain blends and so we we uh, at our establishment green valley grains we we blend to what our customers uh want and our pigeon range has come from uh just talking to our customers basically and because we we have a range of of five different blends for our uh sorry our, our pigeon guys and they're they're all trying to meet a different um need so when you're talking in your, your fanciers and and things like that they're they're not an endurance type uh bird so they're not looking for performance in that sense in a, in a racing sense so they don't need as high a carbohydrate level uh there or uh, a fat higher fat level they're looking for a trajectory upwards so they can tumble downwards so it's a totally different uh the breed is different as well their big size is different so therefore the seed type is going to be different within the blend so we uh, communicate really well with some top breeders within the industry and we work with them to uh, design our, our blends off what their recommendations are. And we also have a few vets in the industry that uh, we work with as well. So our blends are just seed mixes. So what we do then is recommend that our customers then balance out their ration with either a multivitamin or a concentrate palette or something like that as well. So it just depends on the individual because um, everyone has an idea on how they want to feed and uh, we certainly don't dictate that. So we just try and meet the need of what our customers want. Would you actually make a custom blend if somebody gave a request for something like that? Um, we try not to because there's so many different ideas out there. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is try and make the the most of what the uh, general population want and try and meet that need. So like, for instance, we have a high flyer mix that uh, has hemp seeds in it, for instance. So that one at the moment is quite popular because hemp seeds over here are quite popular in, in the in the pigeon um, market. So, you know, that one's quite different because there's no other one out there that, that has a hemp seed in it. So those are the kind of things that we will do to and because we're a, a more of a boutique meal we are, have the adaptability within our the scope of the meal to be able to make uh, changes to, to blends or uh, add to the breadth of our of our product offering pretty quickly if if, if there's a, a need for it with all the different blends are there certain main ingredients that kind of is a common thread throughout all yeah. of them that they just have to be there hundred percent and that comes down to obviously uh, with racing pigeons in for instance you want a high carbohydrate blend uh, you and a high fat blend so you want to meet the needs of thinking of them as as pigeon athletes for instance so you want to make sure that they're meeting their energy requirements for the output that they're they're performing at so you want high carbohydrate high fat to as uh, make sure that the bird is is loaded with enough energy enough fat storage to withstand the distance that it's trying to fly and so it comes back home and not as totally uh, depleted of energy so uh, we make sure that we're using you know maize or or a popcorn uh, so depending on the size of preference that the the customer wants some like whole maize some like popcorn uh, the two different sizes of, of kernel uh, then you might use sorghum and you might have, you know, a, a slight amount of protein, not too much because a racing bird doesn't need too much protein. Uh, that's just an inefficient way to provide energy. Um, then you'll have some fat sources, so seeds, so safflower, linseed, uh, hemp seeds, things like that to provide a nice overall blend of carbohydrates, fats with a slight amount of protein. 
Is there any one single grain that a pigeon can keep well on? Yeah, like traditionally, a lot of pigeon breeders would have like used wheat or or rice or something like that. Just and and that's because for one, that's maybe all that was around at the time. The birds would have done okay on that, but they wouldn't have performed at their best. So. We, you may see some older traditionalists that may just use uh, just wheat or may just use maize or may just use rice. They may not have the best birds going around or they might have some genetic freaks that still might do very, very well. If you want to look for performance and you have giving the bird the best opportunity to perform well, the key is to provide a balanced diet and thinking of them as little athletes really because you're asking them to perform uh, something that is out of the realm of, of uh, and under pressure and for a prize so it's like a racehorse in that sense right you can't ask the Kentucky Derby winner to win on just oats alone it's going to have a complete balanced ration okay so the same thing we want to give the birds a balanced ration so a blend of, of seeds and grains that are going to provide great carbohydrates, great fats, balance that out with a multivitamin premix, which there's many on the market, or a concentrate palette. That's it's the way to go. So I guess my next question would be, um, if I'm feeding a mixed grain feed to multiple birds, we're all pretty much going to eat a little bit different, even if they're yeah. bred they're going to yeah uh, how do i how do i know that they're each getting a wholesome you know they're getting the everything that everybody else is getting 100 percent, and that's where that argument comes in between feeding grains or feeding pallets as well so and that comes down to the individual and the feeding practices and the husbandry of the loft like some people like to feed um, the convenience of a pallet that way so feeding a pallet you sort of a little bit more guaranteed that the bird may be getting a more balanced ration because everything is in the palate at one go. But palatability of palates can be a bit tricky to get a bird onto a palate. They the can be a little bit soft. Yeah, soft. that's it. They can be a bit dusty. I find like with poultry, for instance, uh, once they've had seeds, they won't go back to palates and, and things like that. And they're their um, droppings can be a lot uh, sloppier because they'll drink a lot more water with them, that kind of thing. So it, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just the, the matter of what suits you as the individual, as the carer, what you find that your birds will, will and won't like and how and which how much time you have on your hands. So um, there's multiple ways to get the right result. Uh, it's just which way you would like to do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this pellet thing, right? Because when I was doing the mixed grains, my pigeons would just tear through everything to get to their favorite seed and just food all yes. over the place. And I'm like cleaning the trays and I'm like, well, this is half droppings and half food, you know? So yeah. I, I did switch over to pellets and they still, <laughs> I don't know if it's the size of the pellet they're looking for. It's not as severe as before, but they still pick through and make a big mess. I mean, why do you think a pigeon does it? Do you think it's just they got a favorite thing or do you think that their body is like craving something that that seed has or? Oh, it's interesting, the argument of, of do they p search for things that their body is lacking? Uh, there's a little bit of data out there to say that they'll search for things like salt. Uh, they'll search for things like potentially they'll search for calcium, so grit. So I would always have on offering grit if possible. Um, it certainly helps with digestion. There is an, uh, a potential argument to have some salt on offer as well for them to, to, to peck at uh, if, if possible. Especially in pellets, the blending of salt can be poured up in, in pellets and and so they'll often look for the chunks of it and same with the the calcium the grit it can be in chunks so they'll actually look for that as well so there could be argument for that that that's what they're looking for in things like in in grain and seed blends they'll definitely look for the high fats high value uh, seeds and grains first because they're like candy in a sense so uh, we find that all the time and feedback from customers that they'll always yeah 
it's like kids you know they'll go for the sweet stuff first so yeah that that's just a given and just the way that they eat is is that head movement so they sort of sift as they as they eat and that's just a messy way of eating, <laughs> of eating. it's not worse than quail frustrating though. yeah, yeah quail, quail are terrible yes they're, they're, yes. they're worse Worse yeah, than yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, can you tell me off the top of your head what uh, safflower contains? Yeah, uh, safflower is a great source of fat and a bit of fair bit of fiber as well. Like the outer shell of safflower is quite high in fiber, so uh, a great energy source for a, a long distance bird. Um, you're going to get some great great fat storage from saf adding safflower. Great for feathering as well. If a bird's going through a mulch, you could add a bit more safflower to their ration. Um, yeah, I really like safflower. It's a real, we use it a lot over here. Yeah. High in protein? Uh, yeah, f- fairly high in protein as well, actually. it's It's got a good protein value to it, but it's more valuable in fat. Yeah, we use it a lot in bird blends. Um, I guess that was a relative question. Do you know the percentage off the top of your head? that i have available is nine or seven to nine percent and about 20 yeah that's fat. oh that's pretty on over here we're getting above about 14 percent protein in safflower okay. yeah so yeah anything from 10 and above would be average and and milo's real good stuff right yeah, sorghum um, is is good. Yeah, sorghum. The birds tend not to enjoy it too much. Uh, we find over here, but it is great. It's really, really good. Yeah. They don't. They don't tend to eat it till last. No, they don't tend to like it. <laughs> don't, and that's what I don't that, understand. That's what concerns me on a mixed grain diet. It's the, the tannin. It's a little bit of the tannins in it as well, like red sorghum Reds. has has got has Some got tannins. That's why you, you you guys use a white over there, don't you? No, white's the most expensive thing around. It's using the pet. Yeah. If you're gonna buy it in a in a bag at a feed store around here, it's gonna be red. Or you're gonna Yeah, yeah. Last time I found white was uh seven dollars for about a cup of it. It's ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Right, okay. yeah. Yeah. It's very it's it's very hard to get white over here. We use red as well, but the tannins in it is what makes it a little bit tarty and sour in taste. Yeah. It'd probably yeah. grow pretty good out there. It grows good. Oh there. yeah, 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 yeah. So why is the protein always, always with this like the main it's, label? Yeah, like protein 14%, is percent, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, because protein's the high value that shows quality, I suppose, and I suppose it's a little bit of tradition as well in feed milling. So in feed milling, uh, when you have you have. So, for instance, our our mill is a, a what we call a feed safe accredited mill. So it's Australia's gold standard in in feed milling, and a part of that we have uh, regulations that we have to abide by. And one of those things is uh, labeling. So labeling on the back of the bag, we must disclose protein value, for instance, and protein has to be number one, and it's to show the uh, the quality of the feed ingredient so uh, protein has been traditionally the first sign of quality in in any uh manufactured feed so uh that's traditionally why everything has a protein value to it non-breeding feeds or and things like that protein's not necessarily the be all and end all it's definitely an indication of the quality of the of the ration in a, in a traditional sense. It's something that a consumer will look for uh, just because they know that's that's something that's important on the, on the back of the bag. During breeding season, you know, we get the higher protein stuff just because it's a lot of exactly. energy. I look at it as like an energy thing, you know, energy in, energy out. They're going to use a lot during breeding yeah, season. Yeah, so, and that's where we, 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 we can't get confused where Protein is actually a very inefficient energy source. So we don't use it for long distance race uh, birds. We wouldn't use it as a, a, we wouldn't use a high protein feed for a, for a, a, a racing bird. Uh, but for a breeding bird uh, or a bird under, under malt or something like that, we would give them the support of protein for, for that. It's building blocks, it helps build things. So um, that's where protein is very, very, very important. So after a race, protein's really important because uh, it helps rebuild 
uh, muscle that, that, that may have been lost or damaged um, from the race, but uh, for preparing for or um, during, protein's not, not your friend. And it's carbohydrates that you get. Yes, it's carbohydrates and fats. Yes. Yeah. With people who have a mixed grain and then their birds come in and the last bird's always going to get what nobody else wanted. And then that cycle continues. I mentioned that's what we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah. I feel like if if one nobody would ever intentionally feed safflower to a competition bird or Milo to a competition or to two different birds in their kit, you know, only one to this and one to that. They're they're going to be fed out different. So if one gets to saf, fills up on safflower first, and that last bird, yeah, it winds up full of Milo. You're never yeah. going to keep any sort of consistency. That's what I'm thinking. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's absolutely correct. Yeah, you're you're always the first in is always going to get the pick of the the blend, and they're always going to pick out their favourites. So they're going to fill up on all the fatty stuff, um, not necessarily fill up on what they actually need. Um, and then the poor fella that comes in last, he's always going to get not necessarily what he actually needs, and he's never probably going to reach his potential that comes down to feeding practices and the setup of your lofts and whereabouts your feeders are if there's a way to segregate your birds and and how they come into the loft i'm not sure on 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 yeah everyone's got a sort of a different system i suppose but um well on competition birds there any competition bird that i'm aware of oh coming into the truck yeah yeah you know they they're fed after after they come in about 15 minutes or so yeah and they're all gang fed but you yes. know some of them meet faster than others the cockbirds generally stand still and just eat the other yes. ones are running yep. around and around so yep. that's where i see a lot of that if if i was feeding two different or four different grains they're picking yep. the one they like the most first yeah and that smart old bird he's gonna hammer down and get all that safflower in him and he's eating yep. different than the last one is there's never yeah. going to be a sense of consistency. Yeah, and that's where yeah, your the argument against um, palletized feeds comes in because then you've got a consistent ration, or the the one grain argument comes in, and two recovery after race. So when they come back to the home loft then the recovery program starts. So a lot of um, savvy racers will have a recovery program. So that may well be, you know, a three a three day stage or a three to three day to, to a week stage of a different feeding program. So that may well include different supplementation, including electrolytes and things like that, as well as a different change or well, a change up in the, the blend of the grain. So that may include a higher protein level to help restore and rejuvenate muscle, as well as supporting the energy systems that have been lost. So that's also including extra carbohydrates, extra energy for muscle, uh, well, sorry, body weight loss, so they can recover better. So again, thinking about the the pigeon like an athlete, what it's actually done, it's it's flown long distance, it needs to recover, it needs to recoup, and we need like to us. support we that. We're playing ball. After yeah. The game. 100%. Drinking milk. And the more people that think of them that way, instead of just being a bird that's just done something that a bird normally does they've got to think of them differently they've got to think of them as as an as an athlete fact is they're doing things that a normal bird would not do on purpose that's right on purpose exactly right it's the same as as thinking about them as as an equine athlete we're forcing them to do them so So we need to support them through it so if somebody doesn't have access to different pigeon blends or even pellets and stuff like that what would you say like next best thing would be for them next best thing would be well to, it's, is to go to the high value items so if they're if they're looking for the like racing birds go to the highest carbohydrate value grain uh for racing and then if you can try and some source of of supplementation and if it the worst case scenario at least some grit and some calcium and then having obviously good sources of clean fresh water, all those simple things, simple husbandry, that's the bare minimum. 
possibly having that combination of one carbohydrate source, one fat source, one protein source. That would be my recommendation of that with some grit, fresh water, and then that that's your that would be your your bare minimums. Yeah, kind of make your own blend that way and yeah. tweak, tweak it as yeah. you need them. Yeah. Tweak it as you need it. And then as you get better, as you get better at things, then start looking to to add things to that. Do you guys do you make a pellet blend as well? No, we don't do pellet just just straight grain blends. Grain blends, okay. Um yeah. So here in my hometown, this is a very popular poultry feed that contains a red pellet from playing with horses. I know it's called calf manna. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 22% protein. Ooh, it's high. Yeah. And uh, I know some guys that feed their pigeons with it. I used to feed chickens oh. with it. Okay. They feed their pigeons with it. Yeah, that makes when, me quite nervous. <laughs> when they're raising babies, they every I can I can see who feeds it from yeah. 50 feet because when they're raising babies they're belching red they have red all the babies have red bibs it's hilarious uh but yeah. anyhow they eat that first 100 percent, 100 percent eat that pellet first especially the feeding parents now yeah. that uh, that's where that's that's when i started going hey wait a second that's not good that bird's eating 22 percent protein the one on the other yeah. end is eating that whole corn that's like seven percent yeah the, what 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 concerns me as well as that protein level but is the calcium level in that was going to be through the roof because it's designed for a horse uh, like so a pigeon only needs one percent calcium that would probably be at four and a half five six percent calcium for starters so you're going to run into long-term problems there the copper level in that is going to be through the roof for a pigeon um, so you're going to run into, pro oh my God, it's giving me anxiety just thinking about that. <laughs> well, like I say, it's not a, it's, it's not no a pigeon. No wonder they're red. It's the copper coming out and the eye, and the eye in, in that. Oh my God. Yeah. It's not a pigeon feed. That's why I didn't, I didn't, uh, I'm Please not naming Please people listening it. to that. Don't feed horse feeds. <laughs> it's not a pigeon feed. It's a poultry feed, but, uh. Yes. Oh, well, it, oh, and poultry, but even it is a premium feeding poultry premium. feeds. It's a premium no, it's a poultry pigeon, feed, yeah. but uh, yeah. it's yeah, it's not a pigeon feed. Yeah, uh, so even even poultry feeds, so poultry feeds on the calcium side of things, they're sitting at um, say three to four and a half percent calcium. Pigeons, again, as I said, only need one percent. It's too much. It's too much for them. So yeah, not a great idea. Don't feed poultry mixes to pigeons. Well, that, that's, that's interesting because I've, I've I've known more than one person. One guy does racers. One guy does high flyers. And he does a blend of his own and he adds pellets, alfalfa pellets into it. What do you think about that? That's like um, grass. Well, yeah, so, yeah, it's really so cool Lucen, color we call it Lucen yeah. over here. Lucen, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so alfalfa pellets. So alfalfa or Lucen uh, is really naturally high in calcium, obviously. So probably if the risk to that is the calcium balance the ratio of calcium to phosphorus so that ratio is going to be the wrong way around in the whole balance of the ration for the for the bird so the risk to that is the malabsorption of phosphorus to calcium so what can happen there is you're going to run into issues with bone deformity in the, the young birds um, you may run into risk of numerous issues in the older birds as well so lucent is is a fantastic you know fodder source but for pigeons if it's uh yeah it's in the wrong ratios so um you may you may find problems with that so any kind of horse feed be, is not a good thing to be given yes let's blanket that horse feeds for pigeons bad yeah <laughs> got it got it <laughs> well we're definitely coming up against the clock megan we really appreciate you coming on and and we definitely got a lot of listeners in australia so all you guys out there uh make sure if you can buy the green valley greens they know their stuff and they're willing to come onto our podcast and help promote the hobby. So we got to support that. You're so welcome. Um, thank you for inviting me on. It was it was an absolute pleasure. Anybody, yeah, this is this is really informative. Anytime. We definitely hit you up with a lot of questions really fast, but we try to keep it real condensed. <laughs> I try, that way, I try you know? to keep. <laughs> Lovely to meet you both. It was great. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.